When I was 17 years old, I was living with my grandparents in the beautiful Bay Area town of Los Gatos, California. My childhood up to that point was probably as unhealthy and unconducive to human well-being as you could imagine. Not that it compares to some childhood horror stories, it was more about how I responded to it, but in general it wasn't great. I was born to 16-year-old parents who did their best and had support from their parents, but following the style of the time they were hippies. As a result, my upbringing wasn't traditional in the least, and I missed out on many of the lessons and role models other kids of my era were provided. Unbeknownst to me until a few years ago, I was actually taken in by foster parents for a short time. Estimates of my time with them started at two weeks, then grew to maybe two months. I don't think my mother remembers exactly, or doesn't want to remember. At age five, I lived with my parents and the seven or eight members of my dad's band, The Blondes. We lived in a huge Victorian home in downtown San Jose, California. I had my own room, but shared it with another five-year-old, Alex. In my 20s, a close friend told me about a cousin of his named Alex. In a bizarre coincidence, he turned out to be the very same Alex I used to bunk with. It was Alex's dad, Chris, who helped me learn a very important lesson. While riding along with him in his early 80s Ford van, an engine fire broke out in the cabin between us. Reacting quickly, Chris reached for the only liquid he could find to douse the flames, a gallon-sized jug of Kikuman soy sauce. If you don't know this already, soy sauce doesn't exactly douse flames. Despite the unusual environment, I was managing things very well at that point. I was probably learning a lot and experiencing things other kids were being protected from. I remember strolling up to the neighbor's house to watch her in her basement pursue her medical education by dissecting a pig. Once my parents and their friends were at someone's property and the idea struck them to give me and another of their friends a ride in the shovel of a huge bulldozer. When the girl fell out, I remember looking down on what reminds me of a scene from Streets of San Francisco or something, at the girl laying there unconscious with a trickle of blood running down her forehead. Although I don't remember any of this, many years after this experience, someone told me I was the only guy they knew who could do the jump splits. Apparently, I had gotten into the wine way back then and caused some uproarious laughter when I joined everyone in watching the Jackson 5 on television and began mimicking their dance moves, jump splits and all. Looking back, I do think there was a lot of drug use going on and that definitely influenced my attitude about it. More than once, I've received joints wrapped with holiday-themed rolling paper for Christmas while growing up. My parents' separation and divorce was probably the biggest factor in what became crushing psychological issues in my late adolescence and teen years. At one point, my father actually kidnapped me while my mother failed to return custody to him. My mother left me in the care of her brother while she went to Tahoe for a couple days. My father, who was casing the house, appeared at the door asking to see me. Of course, I wasn't in on the plan, so when he picked me up and hurried outside, I started struggling to get away. I was handed off to my grandmother, who waited in the back seat for me, and my grandfather sped away. I remember looking back and seeing my father wrestling on the front lawn with my uncle, still wearing his boxers. He always seemed to be wearing his boxers in those days. I spent that night at the Walkers. They were about the nicest family I can imagine. The next day we drove south to Disneyland. The psychological torture my mother inflicted on me did unmeasurable harm. I've since forgiven her and we've become friends. It would be unfair for me to neglect to mention that part. Mental illness is a bitch. Despite the unconventional home life, I did surprisingly well socially and even had the attention of girls until about the seventh grade. Then, something happened to my personality and I became self-conscious and desperate for acceptance at the same time. I began telling outrageous and ridiculous lies for reasons unknown even to myself. In retrospect, at the time I was probably the most creative person within miles. I was becoming a pretty good guitar player. I was the one who brought a Jimi Hendrix album and blasted it in the quad at lunchtime. I was the first to wear black athletic shoes at my school. They called them mailman shoes. Even so, I was powerless in the face of my peers and became a magnet for their laughter. When my dad and stepmother needed a break, I was sent to live with my mother's parents and switched high schools. 
I made sure not to have a single friend and or even acquaintance at that school. When I returned to my former school, nothing had changed and I stopped doing homework entirely. Even the teachers ridiculed me, using the excuse that I was failing to have their fun. Little did they know that I had discovered marijuana years earlier and at that point was already spending every night getting high with my few friends. We would smoke six or seven joints between the three of us, no joke. We were getting quality hash for $2 a gram. Later we discovered hash oil. I highly recommend it. I took the GED exam in my sophomore year and devoted my life to drugs. But this video is about life's odd coincidences. Sometimes events happen that can only really be put into a context by one person, while others see only the parts and not the sum of those parts. Less visible would more eloquently describe what I can only attempt to. Think bizarre shit that messes with your head. Having taken the GED in my sophomore year and being exiled to my grandparents, who weren't going to just watch as I pursued my drug experiments full time, I had to find work. Being an enterprising kid with a snake-like tongue, finding work hadn't been that difficult. Keeping them is another matter. I found work at a local upscale pizza chain store called Stuffed Pizza. Their pizzas were huge and literally piled high with fresh stuff. Their store had an art deco theme which worked well to justify their pricey menu. I started part-time working as a busboy slash gopher as I was clearly not worth training for more complex tasks. Although I didn't go to work high, I was in a long-term stoned haze. My boss was a guy named Barry O'Halloran, a 21-year-old animated, probably obnoxious fellow who happened to live right next to my grandparents. In that upscale neighborhood in the foothills of the Santa Cruz Mountains, neighbors were rarely seen and I don't recall ever seeing anyone emerge from that household. Barry was generally cordial toward me as his management of staff was only a peripheral matter. His primary function was obviously to get some action from the bevy of hotties that worked there. His expectations were pretty in line with my capabilities. My general attitude toward my co-workers was to avoid any potential ridicule and remain as near to invisible as possible. My self-esteem was at a low and I escaped a carry like event by the skin of my teeth. Little did I know that Barry was a talisman in my life. Although at that point, my interactions were really only punctuated by an odd request to help him unload some illegal fireworks one afternoon. Looking back, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that Barry was involved in some shady dealings with either the mob or some other psychopathic group. But in all fairness, I have no specific beef with Barry, and he may have been a really great guy. My shift was usually a short swing shift from between 3 to 7 and closing time at 11. One night after work, I set out on my bike ride home, which was about four miles. The streets leading to my grandparents' house were natural forested streets devoid of any street lights. On that night, it wasn't very cold, but there was a thick cloud layer obscuring any moonlight. I was used to making the turns in the last mile by muscle memory mostly, as the darkness persisted even after the eyes had long been adjusted. I rode my father's old 1967 Schwinn 10-speed, which I had only barely brought up to a rideable condition. As usual, my grandparents had already gone to bed as I slipped in and sat down in the living room to the typically shitty options on television. The Carson Show is usually the only thing watchable, since even as recent as this time frame, stations were still signing off the air and leaving just static. Wow, what a missed opportunity to further imprint American exceptionalism or to hawk spray on hair. I guess what I saw that night made matters worse, given how life was not really living up to the hype for me at that time. At least, that was my view then. I see it as merely another of life's experiences now, albeit one of the more challenging to derive some kind of lessons from. I'm referring to one of the guest segments. Mind you, there was nothing to indicate there was anything exceptional about my boss, Barry, at that point. Barry hadn't been at work that evening, but that didn't seem odd in the slightest, and nothing was different in the atmosphere at work on that day. I'll now play for you the segment that I watched live in totally still silence way back then. If you've made it this far, I suggest you watch the entire Carson Show clip, and afterward imagine what your reaction would have been. Imagine the impression it might have left on you. 
Enjoy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. You're in a good mood. You're in a good mood. We got a good show for you now. We have a young man who, uh, I guess, I don't know if he has a title, but they call him Mr. Pizza. And he is, uh, his name is... <coughs> oh, he, does, he does great things with pizzas, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he throws them and he makes them, and it's... Uh, his name is Barry O'Halloran, if you can yeah. believe that or not. So we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you for coming. Would you welcome Barry O'Halloran? <laughs> I said O'Halloran. <laughs> That's unusual, first of all, isn't it? Yeah, very unusual. Should have been Dominic uh, Fungitelli or something like that. <laughs> how are you, Barry? Good, how are you? You got strong hands. Does that help uh, uh, you when it, you shake hands? It comes from uh, years of. Ball and dough and, Ball and making, dough and making the dough batches yeah. and uh, spinning like that. You came in from Los, Los Gatos today or yesterday? Well, or? actually, I work in uh, Cupertino. Cupertino. And the, the places in Cupertino that I work at, I live in Los Gatos, so it's just a yeah. little drive. Somebody said you had problems getting here or something? or uh, It was kind of a rough day the first day I got here. Uh, it was... I went to a little town to make the dough that's around here. I won't mention any names. It was... Uh, wasn't the greatest experience. I didn't have my driver's license. I had to take a cab there. So that was just, I lost my room key. Uh, the dough didn't come out. The first couple batches weren't right, so I had to remake the dough. Brewing up special stuff for Carson dough, so you yeah. can uh, hopefully... You Did you yet make special dough for this demonstration tonight? Uh, yeah, for you. I wanted to make some stuff that... Uh, <laughs> that I'm that flattered. Could, that you could spin a little better than... Uh, I'm, I'm flattered. You come from a large family, right? Somebody yeah, said? nine. Nine of us in the family. I Anybody always, else in the uh, pizza biz? No, there, I always wanted one of the brothers to, or somebody to be in the pizza business so he could get free pizza. You yeah. Know? And then I started when I was like 10 riding the transit buses around, going to pizza places and uh, checking out pizza because I, I don't know, I really liked it. Do you mean you walk by in New York when you walk along? You'll see you look in the windows and you see guys in there. Yeah, yeah, that's what. That's that what, got that's you what I, yeah, I, I found a couple places where they where they throw. They don't really throw that much anymore. Nobody really does it. And I found a couple guys who were really good. And, and I said, hey, I'll be able to match these guys in a couple of years. So I uh, I would just go around to local places and talk to them. And I got my first job as a dishwasher. And there was a guy that was in the throwing position his name was name was dana we in the throwing him, position in the means. Throwing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's and, uh, yeah he was in the he was, that was front it. center stage you know, yeah. was, you know so uh so that was I'll, your goal to hit that yeah i wanted yeah. to i wanted to beat this guy out we called him prima dana and uh so <laughs> i worked at home i made some towels and i practiced my school books got kicked out of classes and you say you made towels i don't understand well, I had to design something that I could take home every, or work at home with every night. You so know? you didn't have to make up dough either. Right, right. Gosh. So I just uh, got some towels and had my grandma stitch them together, and uh, a lot of lonely nights at home spinning towels, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's as good a way to kill time as any, I guess, you know. Just sitting there throwing your towels. Yeah, was, and, you know, and you wake up with a, you know, a pillow next to you, you know, and it started spinning that, and, you know, you well, just... just yeah, you spin, get the technique. Spin now, anything, huh? you know. You kind of get obsessed with it after a while. You know, you start spinning stuff. Now, when somebody told me they'd booked somebody who was really a great uh, pizza expert here, and your name was Barry O'Halloran, I said, "My God, that's that's strange." Now, aren't most guys Italian? Yeah, that's what's. Uh, I was just in San Francisco this last week, and uh, there's you know really predominant Italian pizza makers up there, and and I won the San Francisco pizza throwing contest, and there was some old. Italians and that, so I thought I was going to get killed, but uh, I guess not. So I go up to one of the guys, and uh, you know, I say, uh, why aren't you smiling, you know, and, uh, and he just kind of looks at me, you know, like it's just a job. He's been doing it for 20 years, you know, and 
I grab the piece of dough and, you know, start, you know, doing what I do. And, uh, you know, he gets a laugh out of him. And I, it's just, it's really fun for me. And it's kind of an art doing stuff into it. You know, I really like what I do. Yeah. And to them, I think it's more of just a job, you know. Yeah. You look just, at it as a career. Oh, no. Just a... <laughs> just, uh, Were they jealous? I mean, is, uh, is, is it a closed union? Well, I mean, the, with the, with the <laughs> can non-Italians get in? It, I mean... Uh, well, they, it, it didn't look, put it this way. If I would have put in an application with O'Halloran on it, I, yeah. I don't think it would have uh, been looked at in, anything. Huh? You know, everybody has, uh, you know, almost black hair, big yeah. brown eyes. You know. Now, what's your goal here? To open your, you're going to be part-time manager soon? Is that? Well, I, uh, I started, started at the bottom, and then I just worked up, kept going and going. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, the owner will give me a piece of the store right now. I'm looking to open my own as soon right. as I can. Are you going to franchise? No, oh. I, I do not want to franchise it. I do not want to turn into, uh, I won't say any uh, pizza names. Yeah. But when you, when you franchise, you just, you lose everything, you know, you lose the magic. You know, you don't have, it's not, it's, I'm not in it to make money. I'd rather just uh, do it to have a good time. And you just lose touch with the crew and you just, it's not that fun anymore. That's a good attitude. <laughs> uh, what's the secret? Uh, when, I, when I go out, I like the little thin crust on pizza. Okay. A lot of them are big and thick. What's... You're the, you're the petite style eater, the gourmet. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, the, the thin crust people. We have thick and thin at the restaurant and people come in all the time and uh, you know when they're coming through the door, you know, there's, there's a crowd that likes thick crust, you know, and they'll order, order a couple pitchers of beer and they'll pipe down the thick crust, you know, and, the, and they'll be out the door, you know, belly's full, it doesn't really care what it tastes like. You you're know. telling these are slobs. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, then the... No mail, please. The, the, the thin crust people are, uh, you know, but Ed's, uh, Ed's a thick crust, John. You're, you're, the, you're a thin crust, you know? Um, well, anyway, having said, having said that, we're going to take a break. Now, when we come back, you're going to give us a, a demonstration of the finer art of pizza throwing and yes. pizza making, okay? All right. Okay, Barry, good. we'll take a break. Stay where you are, folks. <laughs> Okay, if you just join us, folks. All right. This is a, a very... Is there such a rank as a, as a pizza master? No, Are there I, don't no ranking? I don't think I've reached master yet. I'm working yeah. on master uh, maybe right. when I get a little older. Okay. You're from Nebraska here. Yeah. Uh, my family was... Uh, everybody was born there. I guess good things come out of the Midwest. Yeah, that's nice to hear. Shall we go over to your... Let's go over. We'll go over to where you work. Yeah, no right. anchovies on mine. <laughs> no anchovies, all right. Just a big, thick crust. That's right. Well, here we are at the pizza counter. We're at the pizza counter. You got your sauce here, flour, cheese, pepperoni. Uh, all right. Now, my grandma made these for me. This is well, what these I, are the things you these practice are, These are the Lonely Night uh, pizza towels here, all right? <laughs> okay. Hey, you're going to practice with one Why, are of these, these about the same weight as the dough would yeah, be? Yeah, I, uh, I wet them down a little bit, so they... Uh, oh, so I see, just they're damp. A, so they're just about right. They and, weigh uh, about, I guess, a pound or something like that? Just so I wouldn't drive up, you know, cost in the, <laughs> in the restaurant. Okay, you're going to use this one. This is novice. All right. <laughs> and this is, uh, this, novice. this is experienced, all right? Okay, now, you're going to start with hand motion, okay? First... Yeah, show me that. It's just like you're throwing a football, okay? Right. That's where you start. Your right hand's going to lead. You're right-handed, right. right? Yeah. Okay, you're going to go up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and out. You're just going to throw yeah. it up and out. So you throw, just, actually throw it? Yeah, you're going to put a little spin on it. Okay, okay. your left hand's going to come around, always on the outside edge, and you're just going to go up and out. Why don't you do that first so I can see okay. what you're talking about? Practice run here. All right, just go up like oh, that. Oh, look at that. Okay. Just, it's just okay. Now, it's just really basic. Just, just, just remember to just go up. Just go up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. This one's yours, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> got it, he's got it. All right. Okay. To get to the more advanced stages, you won't, we won't want to do that, but uh, just yeah. we're going to move on. We're going we're to move on to the real stuff here now. Okay. All right. Enough practice. All right, yeah, enough practice. Practice in a couple minutes here, all right? Okay. All right. This is yours, all right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> This is mine here, okay? And these are a little flower you're gonna get. Uh, you wanna put an apron on? No, I don't think it's necessary. Okay, we'll be cool, all right? Okay, now, same same thing. Just don't lose it. Don't put too much spin out there. It. You wanna just go up and uh, out, okay? So, just go up like that. It's just, it's... Hey, whoa! <laughs> That's 
don't want to. You don't want to put. Uh, That's no good, right? You don't want to. Uh, don't want to. Uh, don't want to put holes with it. Here, I got this. Yeah. Got this extra one I just for you here. Yeah. This one's gonna be a lot. Does to this one to mean you can't serve this to people? Would they know? Uh, you just, cover this. Get get points off in competition, John. You wouldn't want that. It'll be in. Okay. There you go. No, you just gotta give when it's coming down. Okay. Hey. Go, go for some money. Go for some money. Higher, Johnny. Higher. 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 <laughs> That's it. That's it. Go. Oh, there you go. Yours, yours spin. Mine doesn't spin well. You just gotta remember the torque. Yeah. Remember the right. torque. All right. Now, is this just for flash or just for show or does it. Is, now, does that help the pizza, or is it just for show? <laughs> well, you see, when you get those rollers, that, that comes out like that. Uh, you don't you know, do this when you put the stuff on it. I mean. Oh yeah, no, I spin them. I spin them all okay, the time. Okay, now what's the next step? Uh, next step would be advanced. Uh, well, advanced pizza. Advanced pizza, pizza right. stage. You gotta have just the right dough. I designed all this right. dough just for your show here. Okay. Tony, all right. Now, and you get into these tricks. We're gonna be learning these tricks backstage. Okay. All right. First one, it's on your back. All right. We're going to go for a little competition race here, all right? Get this stuff out of the way. Well, somebody says you can make a pizza very quickly. Yeah, I can make it pretty quick. I've never made it, uh, you know, on TV before or anything. Well, but that's all uh, right. We're going to work on it, okay? This is, uh, this is a dough ball. We're going to roll that out? We're going to roll it out. Right. Okay, you got your rolling pin there. Oh, you got one for me? Is, yeah, novice pin. What I do? <laughs> <laughs> novice this. Novice pin. Okay. <laughs> Now tell me, look here. What is the sequence? You got to tell okay, me this. Like we roll the dough. Me. I'm gonna put you through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna roll it out. Okay. Roll it out. You just want to give it one spin. Okay. Right. Just gonna put it in this pan. One okay? spin, then on the pan. On the pan. Okay. Gonna take the sauce. Sauce. Mm, yummy. All right. And you're gonna. I got this. My, is, this that's is, my sauce. This is not. This is not a spoon. All right. Raw spoon. Here, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and we put some pepperoni okay, on. Okay, now we're gonna cheese it. You're then cheese it, it, and then we're gonna put some pepperoni on. And pepperoni. We're gonna have a good time. Okay, right. so am I gonna put a watch on this? Ah, uh, no timers, no timers. You can get your dough on the on the thing here. All get right. it, get it floured up. Want to be have? Uh... <laughs> get it ready to go. All right. Rolling pin in hand. All right. Get to know your sauce, John. Get to know your sauce. Get to know your sauce. Get to know your sauce. Okay. You gotta get to know your cheese. Know your cheese. cheese. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now remember the practice throw. Just one little throw. Okay. We gotta roll, roll it out roll flat it first. first. Yeah. Just roll it first. Okay. You wanna go? Wanna go pretty quick? Let me know when you're ready. Ready? Go. All right. Go. Just one throw, Johnny. One throw. Oh, what do you mean? All right. <laughs> Get to know your sauce. Get to know your sauce. Get to know your sauce here. Yeah. Oh, the spoon, the spoon. Oh, okay. All right. Cheese. The cheese. <laughs> the cheese, Johnny, the cheese. Now do we roll it? No. <laughs> well, you, you won, man, you won. That's it. That's it. But look at now, look at it, you see? Look at those. Now be honest. Well, let's be perfectly honest. Which of these pizzas would you prefer? <laughs> the one on the right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Barry. Hey. <laughs> He's a nice young man, isn't yes. he? Well, oh, he knows good. how to handle oh. that stuff. Want to like a pizza? Maybe we can put yeah, one up later. Put one up. All right, in a moment, Steve Landisberg will join us and David Horowitz after this.